All right, so this lecture will discuss normal, normal newborn nutrition and some abnormalities you might see as well, comparing breastfeeding, formula feeding, um, and what they need as an infant. So the, the only two nutritional things that newborns should be getting is either breast milk or formula. Um, they are designed to meet the nutritional needs of babies. Um, when you're talking about things like cow's milk or other um, animal type milks, um, they do not provide um, the nutrition that baby needs. It can lead to, they can't break it down. Um, so it can cause um, bloody diarrhea, it can cause um, iron deficiency, anemia, all kinds of problems. So breast milk or formula are the only two acceptable things that babies should be getting um, up to 12 months of age as far as a type of milk. Um, so breast milk can be either through breastfeeding or express breast milk either way. You can also get donated um, breast milk from people that um, have a high production. They're able to provide additional breast milk um, to the to women. Um, so the recommendation from the American Academy of Pediatrics is exclusive breastfeeding for the first six months. Um, so no, no other table food or anything like that. Um, and keeping it as part of the diet up until two years of age um, to help um, with immunity um, and decreasing risk of long-term potentially complications. So there are tons of benefits of breastfeeding for both mom as well as baby. It not only um, decreases risk of postpartum hemorrhage, that's a big um, like immediate um, benefit, um, but it decreases risk of breast cancer, diabetes, things like that later in life for mom. Um, for infants, it decreases their risk of long-term complications. It improves their immune system, um, decreases risk of obesity, um, things like that. But when it comes down to it, a fed baby is best. Um, so even women that formula feed are still providing good nutrition to their babies. Um, so on page 606, it does talk about those benefits um, of breastfeeding, um, but there are benefits to both mom and baby. Um, there are some populations that cannot breastfeed. Um, we have talked about um, HIV mothers with HIV, for instance. Uh, it's contraindicated for them to breastfeed. Um, there's been no studies that they've been able to show that uh, HIV is passed on in breast milk and levels that could infect a baby, but you don't want to take that risk. Um, if they have low production, some women truly do have low production of milk, um, and no matter what they do, they can't bring it up. Um, so those are formula feeders. Um, if babies have allergies, um, mothers can eliminate those things from their diet. Um, especially dairy is a big common one you see. Um, but dairy is really difficult to eliminate from your diet because if baby has a dairy allergy, it's not just lactose that's the problem. It's, it's dairy proteins. Um, so even things like non-dairy creamer has dairy in it and hot dogs and all kinds of things have the, those milk proteins in it that they have to eliminate. So um, sometimes it becomes so difficult they, they switch to formula, um, which is understandable. But um, depending on the severity of the allergies, sometimes formula is necessary. Um, sometimes if babies have uh, phenylketonuria or PKU, for instance, they have to use um, a special formula because of um, the, the protein that can be passed on to, to the baby. Or if mom has PKU, that's another example because of those um, byproducts. So what do babies need? So as far as their fluid, you do not need to memorize um, how much fluid they need and how many calories they need. Um, because it does vary by age. Um, fluid, if they are taking in formula or breast milk um, on a regular basis, then they are getting enough fluid. Um, babies under the age of six months should not get anything but formula or breast milk, um, even for hydration. Um, because their kidneys are very immature, they cannot concentrate their urine um, like 
adults can or older children, um, and they can't concentrate their electrolytes. So when babies are given free water, um, it can lead to seizures because it can drop their sodium. So all their fluid needs are met, even if it's the middle of summer and it's hot, um, through formula or breast milk, um, or if they're unable to eat because they have um, like a GI um, bug or whatnot, then um, they should only get Pedialyte as a substitute if they need it for fluid because that has those electrolytes that they need. Um, so their energy, they get um, a combination of carbohydrates, fat, protein from either breast milk or formula, um, typically about 100 calories per kilogram per day. Um, and if they are eating on average, every two to three hours, especially as a newborn, usually they are getting that. Um, babies are good about letting you know when they need to eat. Um, so as far as vitamins, um, babies who are formula fed need no supplementation. Um, they get everything they need from that formula. Babies that are breastfed, vitamin D um, does not transfer into through breast milk um, so oftentimes babies that are breastfed are recommended to take a vitamin d supplement um, it's a liquid supplement they take once a day um, calcium is fine they're getting calcium from breast milk but the vitamin d doesn't transfer um, and I, like i mentioned in the last lecture typically your your formula babies are um, not gonna um, or your formulas don't have a lot of iron because they have iron stores from from mom um, So when we're talking about neonates or newborns, um, weight loss is normal. Um, weight loss is expected um, because of fluid shifts um, in the in the first couple weeks. So typically, babies will lose five to ten percent of their body weight um, and should come back up to their birth weight at least, if not exceed their birth weight within ten to fourteen days after birth. Um, that can be concerning if they have not come back to their birth weight within that time, or if they lose more than ten percent of their weight. Um, sometimes they will need extra supplementation. They may give NG feeds um, till they so they can get that weight up. Um, sometimes it's just a matter of their slow starters to feed. Um, sometimes it can be um, a more um, a more concerning problem such as a malabsorption disorder, things like that, cystic fibrosis. Sometimes that's one of the first signs is that they're they're not gaining weight because they're not absorbing the nutrients from what they're eating. Um, so when we're talking about weight loss, up to 10% is normal. More than 10% is not normal, and they need to gain back to minimum of their birth weight, if not above that, within two weeks. So let's do an example. When we, we need to figure out how to calculate what is that new, new, newborn weight loss, um, how much did they lose? Um, so the way you calculate a newborn weight loss is you take their birth weight, um, and subtract from that whatever their current weight is, um, it, whether you're taking it at two days or 10 days or whatever it be, and that will tell you how many grams they've lost. And then you take that grams loss and divide it by whatever their initial weight was, their birth weight, and then multiply by 100, which was the part that will give you a percentage um, to tell you their percentage of weight loss. So it's a, it's a basic ratio of grams loss divided by whatever their starting weight was. So as an example, um, let's say you have a baby that at birth they were 3,800 grams. We do weights in grams when we're talking about newborns. Um, and then when they followed up with the pediatrician in four days, they were at 3,400 grams. So how much did they lose? What is that percentage? Are we concerned? So when we take that, we take 3,800 minus 3,400. They lost 400 grams of weight. Um, when you divide that 400 grams by the 3,800, they're starting birth weight, and then multiply by 100. Um, that baby lost 10.5% of their birth weight, um, which is too much. That's more than that 10%. So they may be looking at supplementation for that baby. Um, if they're if they're breastfed, they may add additional formula, um, or they may um, start some NG feeds just to to give them a little extra to see if that gives them a boost. So when we're talking about breastfeeding, we're not going to go into the details of the path, the physiology of how it works. But um, as progesterone decreases um, towards the end of the pregnancy, it increases those prolactin levels to prepare for external uterine life. Um, and that will so increase milk production. So sometimes women will start lactating um, while they're still pregnant, not, not concerning. Um, 
breastfeeding is a supply and demand system, um, which means if babies are eating every two hours, mama's body is going to produce the milk needed to supply every two hours. Um, women that have twins and triplets can breastfeed as well because their body is um, basing the amount of production on how much they need. So sometimes you'll see like when babies get sick and they're not feeding as well, mom's milk production will start to go down. Um, or when parents go back to work and they're not um, breastfeeding or pumping as much as they used to be, um, that can cause their supply to go down. So it's really important to teach parents that um, they need to um, not allow their milk supply to go out, go down. Um, <clears throat> so when we're talking about human milk, um, milk actually doesn't cut true milk for nutritive value doesn't come in with until usually about two to three days after birth. Um, the first thing that does come in is called colostrum, um, often referred to as liquid gold because it is a really important um for antibodies. It's usually like a, a honey yellowish color, um, but it's it's really important to, to help build their immune system. And it also, um, as that colostrum is being produced and um, as baby is getting that colostrum, it's stimulating that milk production. So if baby is breastfeeding, um, it, it will continue to stimulate that breast um, and milk production. Um, so when we're talking about breastfeeding typical breastfeeding um, a good amount is 10 to 15 minutes each side um, parents should start on the breast they ended with last time so that they're not starting on the same breast each time because that can lead to where one bre breast produces more milk than the other if they're always starting on the same side um, teaching them various types of positioning um, if you go back to your maternal newborn module that we did um it, you did as a homework assignment way back near the beginning of the term there is a video on um breastfeeding positions that's a really good video for you to see um that in teaching them those different positions depending on what's going on um and the situation so as far as those positions you see the three most common ones up um, on that top picture, um, A is the one people most think of. That's your cradle hold. Um, and that is um, holding them across the chest, um, feeding on the breast. So this is good if you have one baby, you don't have a C-section, um, and can be comfortable for both baby and mom, especially if mom is laid back a little bit. Um, position B that you see the middle picture is called the football hold. Um, and if you look at how baby is held, baby is held al alongside the side of mom's body um, and the head is supported. Um, this is good for mothers who have twins and they want to breastfeed um, both babies at the same time. This is also good for mothers who have had a C-section because then that baby is not laying across that incision um, and irritating that incision. So it's important to teach them to use that position instead of the cradle hold if they've had a C-section. The last one you see is a sideline position. I know it's hard to tell in the picture how mama's laying, but mama's actually laying flat on her side and baby is laying parallel to her alongside her. So this is good for moms maybe who are very tired um, or moms who are having trouble um, holding baby. Like moms who have had magnesium sulfate, for instance, and they're weak, um, this would be a good way um, to protect both mom and baby from injury. Um, as far as nutrition of the mom, mom's are recommended to get 500 additional calories per day um, when they are breastfeeding and oftentimes they still will lose weight. Um, extra fluids, generally about a liter of extra fluids, so um, three to three and a half liters of fluids a day is recommended. They should be resting whenever baby's resting. Um, not always realistic, but that is the best thing um, to recommend. Um, teaching them what the cues are for hunger. You see the picture on the bottom. Um, so by the time they're crying that they're hungry, it's too late. And sometimes babies are very hard to attach to the breast um, once they are that overly agitated. Um, so noting the early cues, like putting their hand in their mouth and sucking on their hand, um, yawning, more um, moving around, things like that can indicate that they're hungry. Um, as far as 
breast care. Um, so breast care is one of the most important things, and this goes for breastfed as well as non-breastfed mothers, um, breastfeeding mothers, is they should wear a supportive bra to support their breasts. Um, when it causes more tenderness um, if they are not um, wearing a supportive bra. Um, as far as with breastfeeding, they should not wash their nipples with soap because it will dry and crack the skin. Um, they can use lanolin, um, which is the, the cream you can put, but it, sometimes it can block those Montgomery ducts. Um, but lanolin is encouraged that helps prevent the drying and the cracking, um, making sure that they are using um, breast stimulation. So anything that will stimulate um, that milk production is good. So you, warm water showers and standing with towards the, the water so their water hits their breast. Using warm packs um, either on their breasts or even in their axillary regions can help with that production. Um, things like that. Um, teaching them also about engorgement and how important it is to make sure they're breastfeeding frequently um, to prevent engorgement. So engorgement usually occurs around day three or four as their milk comes in, you'll hear them say. Um, and this is where they're, they'll get the bilateral breast um, tenderness and swelling um, and firmness. Um, it can be very painful um, and it um, could potentially lead to a clogged duct if they are not clearing their breasts and emptying their breasts completely. Um, also teaching them, so with mastitis, um, we talked about mastitis uh, with postpartum, but teaching them those signs of mastitis, um, those signs of clogged milk ducts, and how to address those problems. Um, another important thing to teach with breastfeeding is contraception. Breastfeeding is not a form of contraception like we've talked about. Um, it is nature's way of kind of decreasing your risk of getting pregnant, but it is not a complete form of contraception, and you can still get pregnant on um, while breastfeeding. Um, so making sure that they have a backup method um, once they hit six weeks, they will put them on um, potentially some kind of hormonal type of contraception like your birth control pills, your progesterone birth control pills, IUDs, things like that. So formula feedings. Um, so there are tons of different kinds of formulas. Um, there are your general formulas like your Similac and your Infamil, they have a general formula that most babies can tolerate. There's no special needs of the formula. Um, all the way down to things like Alimentum, which is um, a very expensive, very specialized formula um, for babies that have very sensitive tummies that can't break down food very well. Um, they will, it's basically pre-broken down, so all they have to do is absorb it. Um, so that is a, a, um, an option. There is one, um, for instance, with PKU or phenylketonuria, there is a formula called Lofenilac, L-O-F-E-N-A-L-A-C, specifically very low protein um, that those babies have to have because they can't tolerate the protein that they would get from breastfeeding. Um, so again, they should only have formula or breast milk um, for the first six months of life. Um, if they are on formula, they should not get any additional, well, with both, they should not get any additional water. It's important to teach parents how to mix formula. So you can get pre-mixed, which is usually what you see in the hospital, um, but you can most commonly, people at home will buy the powder and mix it themselves because it is significantly cheaper that way. Um, but making sure they are always mixing according to, um, according to um, the directions on the can, unless otherwise specified by the doctor, that sometimes when we've had babies that have trouble um, with weight gain, they may have specifically from the doctor dietitian instructions of how to make it more concentrated, so it's a higher calorie count, but um, they you want to make sure they're not diluting it more. Sometimes women um, that don't have a lot of money, they will dilute the formula to make it last longer. And unfortunately, that extra water the baby can't process and it can lead to seizures. Um, I've had several babies I've taken care of where either the parents were giving them water because it was summer, or they were diluting the formula too much or whatever it be, um, and it was causing them to have seizures. Um, 
Generally, when we're talking about solid food for both breastfed babies as well as your formula-fed babies, um, they, you can start solids at four months of age, um, and generally at four months, it should only be grain, so your rice cereal and things like that. Um, but the American Academy of Pediatrics does recommend waiting till six months to start those. Um, and again, usually you're going to start with your grains, your cereals, um, then your vegetables next, um, and then your fruits, and then your meats. Um, meats are generally not recommended until eight months is when they can start digesting those a little bit better. And again, they should not be getting cow's milk or any other kind of animal milk until they are at least um, 12 months of age because of iron deficiency anemia or you'll hear a bottle anemia.